Good morning, everybody. It's a great pleasure being here today. My name is Daniela Massaro, and I am a PhD uh, student at KTH Mechanics Department. Today, I'm going to present the work carried out together with doctors Nicola Offerman, Adam Pepriski, and Professor uh, Philip Lutter. I will focus on some recent results of our research, which is about the numerical investigation of turbulent flows using adaptive mesh uh, refinement <clears throat> and comparing different kinds of error-driven uh, approaches. Let me first start from the code that we are currently uh, using, NAC 5000, which is an open source uh, CFD code, mainly written in Fortran 77, around the 90%, the remaining 10% is written in C, and it is based on MPI as standard for parallelization. It has demonstrated very high scalability up to 1 million of MPI ranks and even a very good uh, portability. And we can model different kinds of flows. One of the most important features of NAC is the minimal numerical viscosity. So we are able to uh, catch, to evaluate, and also keep track of the smaller scales. But of course, this can be an issue from the numerical uh, stability point of view. So also some uh, filtering options are available. We use second or third order backward differentiation uh, schemes for time integration, treating the nonlinear term explicitly and the remaining Stokes problem uh, implicitly. And we have spectral element method as a, a spatial discretization. I think that this is one of the most important design, design choice behind NAC. And to have an overview uh, about what are spectral element method, we can of course say that they belong to the uh, Galerkin class. So we are going to define a trial function as a continuous piecewise algebraic polynomial, but they combine the geometrical flexibility of finite element uh, method, uh, which belongs to the Galerkin class as well, but they usually use a low order polynomial. And this is combined with the exponential convergence of spectral uh, methods. So this, uh, 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 high fidelity simulation that we can have because basically each element uh, is considered as a spectral element itself, as a spectral uh, subdomain where we can guarantee the exponential convergence of the, of the solution. And within this framework, our group has implemented and developed an adaptive and automatic meshing uh, pr procedure. Well, AMR is really important when we don't have an a priori knowledge of the, of the solution, or for example, if we wanna have a, a significant uh, computational saving. For example, if we look to the flow around the NACA 4412, we can guarantee the same resolution around the airflow, and we can, for example, increase the computational domain. In this way, we can put the boundary condition more uh, far away. And we all know how much the boundary condition can be uh, critical for incompressible flow due to the global coupling, which is given by the elliptic pressure uh, equations. So uh, putting a boundary condition more far away, we can reduce the influence of boundary condition on the quantity that we wanna uh, measure. In MR, we have two main ingredients. First of all, we must be able to measure the error, and then we need to have a refinement uh, strategy. Now, uh, in the theory of spectral Hallman method, we have different approaches. We can have the R refinement, where we're going to move the boundaries of the element in analogy with the uh, stiffness. If you want, we are going to tune the, uh, the stiffness of the spring, sorry. Uh, and in this way, we can keep the same topology. We are not going to introduce any angle nodes. But this, usually, it is not really efficient. On the other hand, we can have the pure refinement, where we are going to increase the polynomial order, where there is larger. But NAC doesn't allow to have elements with different polynomial order. So what we do is the so-called H refinement. So we are going to split the, the element in an isotropic way. Of course, we need to deal with the hanging nodes. We use an interpolating uh, operator. And we have uh, some external library, like before, uh, before or Parmetis, in order to uh, keep track of the grid hierarchy, element connectivity, and partitioning. On the other hand, we must be able to measure the error. So we have implemented and tested the spectral error indicator, which has been introduced first by uh, Professor Catherine Maripris. So for simplicity, if we look to the 1D truncated spectral expansion in legend base, we have U tilde K, which is the spectral coefficient. We have the polynomial of order K, uh, so PK. And we are going to measure the truncation error due to the fact that, of course, we are going to truncate our polynomial expansion and the quadrature error related, related to the integration error. Uh, we are not going to evaluate, for example, modeling error, round of error, and so on. Uh, as regards the quadrature error, we are on a safe side because we are always able to evaluate an upper bound 
But uh, for the truncation error, we need the spectral coefficient uh, uh, u tilde k for k larger than n, where n is our polynomial order. So what we do is a linear interpolation in a least square sense of the logarithm u tilde k. So we have the blue coefficient, we are going to interpolate them, and then we will extrapolate the spectral coefficient, uh, the red ones. Then we combine the uh, quadrature and truncation error in the spectral indicator, which is a local measure of the error, and it doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, physical information. So it doesn't know about quantity that we want to measure or about the physics of the problem. So for this reason, we have also implemented and tested the joint error estimator, uh, which is going to refine the mesh uh, in order to improve the valuation of a given quantity of interest. We define our quantity of interest using a given functional, so you can see here some coefficients, so j omega u and j omega p on the solution field. Then we have j omega d on the Dirichlet boundary condition and j omega o on the outflow boundary uh, condition. This became the right-hand side terms of the joint problem that we can solve. We evaluate the joint variable, which is going to provide us a, a sensitivity uh, to the quantity of interest. So it is going to tell us which regions have to be refined in order to improve the valuation of our uh, function. And when we are going to evaluate the error on the functional, uh, we have a time integrated quantity, which is basically built up by three different contribution. Each one is the product of the residual and this uh, joint weight. So the blue terms are the joint weight, Actually, the interpolation error on the joint variable, which can be evaluated again using the spectral indicator. And then we have R1 and R3, which are the strong cell residual of momentum and continuity equation. And R2, which is the normal stresses along the boundary of each element, but this is usually uh, negligible. And in this way, we can uh, uh, have a measure of the sensitivity of our uh, uh, with respect to our quantity of interest. And so we can weight the residual using this uh, measure. Now, if we look to a first comparison between spectral indicator and joint error estimator for the uh, 2D steady flow around the cylinder at Reynolds 40, we can already see uh, two different uh, refinement patterns. So the spectral indicator is going to refine all along the way in a more uniform way, and only a bit around the, the cylinder. On the other hand, for the joint terror estimator, the functional uh, is the drag of the cylinder. So we can see how the joint is going to refine more and more uh, around the, the cylinder. It is going to refine only the initial part of the wake. So the, the far uh, wake region is not refined uh, at all. But as long as we look at 2D uh, steady flow, everything is fine, everything is nice, but there are several drawbacks uh, for the joint error estimator. As we know, the joint uh, operator is linear, and when we move to, to 3D and steady turbulent flows, so we have a chaotic system, the uh, joint system is going to show an exponential sensitivity to uh, any uh, uh, small perturbation to an initial uh, condition. And this means that the joint problem is destined to blow up, so we cannot use anymore the joint solution to have a sensitivity measure to our, with respect to our function. In the literature, there are different uh, uh, methods that try to solve this problem from the physical point of view, like the ensemble and joint, the shadow technique, but they are all quite unpractical for real application. We are talking about four or five times order of magnitude larger with respect to the, the usual uh, simulation. What we did was trying to fix the problem from the numerical point of view, performing a normalization at each time step using the velocity magnitude. This is possible here because we have a linear system, which is the joint, and a linear function uh, since we are looking at the drag. Moreover, we are not interested in an absolute measure of the sensitivity, but what we want to have is a, a relative measure. So we only want to know which region is more or less sensible to the quantity of interest. And for the flow around the 2D uh, cylinder in an unsteady configuration, so at Reynolds 200, for example, we can have a one-to-one -one comparison between the usual joint error estimator and the, this new normalized joint error indicator because uh, the system is chaotic, but we, uh, we don't have real turbulence in 2D. And we have uh, seen an excellent agreement around the 96% of the element has been refined with the same uh, uh, accuracy and in the same uh, in the same way, and this has encouraged us to apply 
for the 3D and steady turbulent flow in the periodic keel. Well, the periodic keel is basically a channel flow with a constriction on one side. And here you can see in the first row, the joint error estimator, and in the second one, the spectral error indicator. Again, the spectral indicator is going to refine in a more uniform way, not only on the bottom, but also in the center. On the other hand, the joint is going to refine more and more on the bottom. Here, the, the functional is the drag on the bottom of the periodic hill. And we have marginally resolved elements in the center of the, of the periodic hill. When we look to some quantities of interest, like for example, the separation or reattachment uh, location, uh, we can see how the uh, joint error estimator is going to converge uh, faster, basically because we have more and more elements in, uh, in the bottom. Uh, for the spectral error indicator, we need, and this is the second picture on the right, we need to double the, uh, the number of elements. Of course, in this way, the spectral error indicator is going to refine more even in the, in the bottom part. And so we can see a kind of convergence with respect to the experimental data or the reference data, which has the, the dash lines. Now, the latest case where we have applied and tested and used uh, our AMR framework is the flow around the 3D uh, step cylinder. The step cylinder is a geometry where we have two cylinders of different uh, diameters joined at one extremity, and it is a good model, for example, for the foundation of offshore wind uh, turbine. Here you can see uh, some lambda two visualization for a turbulent flow configuration. The Reynolds uh, based on the large cylinder is 1000. And we have used the spectral error indicator. Uh, you can see how, uh, how around the junction in the blue region, the spectral error indicator is going to refine more and more in the region where we have more vertical structures. So it is going to identify basically the edge and the junction uh, vortices. But uh, how we can really exploit AMR capabilities? Now, if you look on the, uh, to the picture on the bottom left, we, can, uh, uh, we have some lambda two visualization around the junction. And the vortices H1, H2, and H3 have been already pointed out in a previous study, but we are not able to understand if the vortex R1 was a real vortex or just an artifact of the, of the simulation because the, uh, the special discretization was not using a naive order. Here we have a polynomial order equal seven. So we are able to capture the vortex R1, even its dynamics. And you can see in the red picture, the vorticity component uh, that is going to describe this uh, ring uh, vortex. So eventually to uh, sum up today, I wanted to introduce the AMR uh, implementation in XR1000 made by our group, the spectral indicator joint error estimator uh, showing the comparison between these two different error driven approaches and this new normalized joint error indicator starting from 2D uh, steady flows up to 3D and steady turbulent flows like in the periodic hill and eventually the uh, flow around the 3D step cylinder. When it comes to the actual uh, computational saving that we have observed, uh, it is around 10 or 20 times for external flows, but even for internal flows like the periodic hill or even a straight pipe or bent pipe, we have measured uh, computational saving around two, three, up to uh, four times. So thanks a lot for your attentions and I'm available if you have uh, any questions.